Tis too much for me to afford a woman's lodging. Oh, and her clothes. As, as far as lodging is concerned, I'm sure you have a single room of your own somewhere. Y yes, but... And concerning clothing, tis my boast to look better the littler I wear and my best in nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tis a sore temptation, Lucy. But I have my sight set on a woman whose fortune will restore the outrigger trigger ancestral home to its former glory. And to take a mistress now might seem a bit improper. Of course, once I'm married, tis another story. Yeah, well, uh, what a strange girl. No sense of the fit way to do things. Oh, 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 oh. But he is handsome. Well, red-headed. Why, that's for me. Infinitive honor. 
Why, so few gentlemen nowadays values the ineffectual qualities in a woman. Captain Absolute is the very pineapple of politeness. No, I've not yet had the pleasure of seeing Miss Languish. I hope she is but a pale reflection of yourself. You're not ignorant, Captain, that the giddy girl has somehow fixed her affections upon a barely ensign that none of us has ever seen. No, I'm not at all prejudiced against her on that account. That's very confederate of you, sir, but I must tell you that only today I interceded a passionate note from the impotent fellow. Oh, the devil, my letter! Tis that traitorous Lucy! Read it, Captain. <clears throat> my soul's idol, my adored Lydia, the astodgy salutation. <laughs> Indeed, he is not too clever. <laughs> I dare say. I am excessively alarmed at news of possessing a rival. That is you, sir. I believe you're right, ma'am. Who has universally the character of being an accomplished gentleman and a man of honor. Well, that's handsome enough of him. Oh, the fellow has a nasty design in writing, sir. Again, I believe you're right. As for the old, weather-beaten she-dragon who guards you, why, who can you mean by that, ma'am? Why, me, sir, me, me, me. Once again, I believe you're right. Never mind, man, the insolent scoundrel. It should not be hard to elude her vigilance as to the ridiculous vanity that makes her dress up her coarse features and deck her dull chat with words she doesn't understand. Well, there's a man, the worst attack of all, but my careful arrangement of articles, of which I am so profane. They deserve to be drawn and quartered. Uh, let me see. The ridiculous vanity that makes You need not read it again, sir. Oh, well, <clears throat> I must be going. Uh, but perhaps provide you the lady would consent to see Captain Absolute. I must tell you, sir, that the girl has refused to see anyone. Oh, she won't mind me. Just tell her Beverly. Sir? <clears throat> the company affects my tongue. I, I meant to say... Oh, Beverly? Uh, to propose you tell her by way of jest, and uh, that her Beverly awaits. She'll come fast enough then. Very amusing indeed, sir. <laughs> Lydia, come here. The hussy hears me call, believe me. Lydia! Nay, I shall tell the mate that Captain Absolute has come to call, and make her behave as become a young lady. Uh, very well, madam. I resume my role as... Myself. Uh, someone should make a plot of this. The complications grow too heavy, and I don't know how long I can keep them up. Oh, there he stands, the hated rival, and an officer too. But how unlike my Beverly, how gross his figure, how dirty his boots, how completely enough of this, uh, madam! Beverly! Oh, dearest! Hush, my love. How came you here? I have deceived your aunt. Pass myself on her for Captain Absolute. Oh, charming. She's really convinced. Quite. But we trifle with our precious moments. Give me your undying promise we will wed no matter who I appear to be. I plead for it, and rapidly. Do you consent to forfeit my inheritance, that paltry matter of a huge fortune, and fly on the wings of love? Yes, yes. Come rich to me only in loveliness. But quickly, quickly, let's fly, as you say. Tell me, how delightful will poverty be if we are together? I've told you before. Tell me again. Later. I'll tell you later. Now. Tell me now. 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 <laughs> Just possibly let this business go on too long. Uh, let me put it this way, darling. I promise for you nothing but the worst. Oh, you are too kind, sir. Now tell me, but why you love me and I'm yours forever? Unfortunately, there is time is a Tell me, Edson. Love me, why? 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 Oh, don't ask me why I love you. That's what poets have pondered for years. Oh, don't ask me for a reason. For my answer may bore you to tears. Though you beg me, I simply. Belong to you 
my guilt Though we must leave the lonely field unspoken Please believe Only silence won't deceive The promise we've not made remains unbroken Pretty reasons you would hear Someday all the disappear But reasons we don't say never Yeah. 
devil take Lydia? I've never been in a worse humor. I can quite enjoy myself in Bedlam, in Harry, in Philadelphia. What a poor true this Beverly is. You didn't find it in Beverly, did you, Dad? Everyone has found him, except your challenge. Because? What sort of fellow is he, dear Jack? Horrible! A monster! A monster, you say? Does that mean he is fierce? A raging tiger who does not care if he dies. And I suppose you told him all about fighting Bob. Oh, and he was no end impressed, hey, hey. But insists on fighting tonight, half past the stroke of seven. Oh, misery. Ah, <laughs> Stoldrums. <laughs> Why are you so sorrowful? Pay no attention to Jack Absolute, Bob. He has forsworn his lady love forever. Drink! Huh. Odds flaggers! I've never known you to imbibe so. Must you drink and I fight for lack of woman as wife? Wife? Some drink because they have one. Odds fearful flesh! And, and, and you, sir, why are you drinking? Is there another reason? What is that a reason? A man loses his reason and for no reason at all takes a woman his wife. Why? Why? Indeed, sir, why? Why? A man's a fool to win because when all is said and done, each one that has the same that far, she can't be more than one, or she may be. Wait until they raise a fence of fish and get your own. 
my own sire to make a jackanapes of his father, and that damned up son of a dozy with her head quite perforated from literature. He's in a sweet mood. With that, good sir, I differ in opinion. Whoever you are, sir, you're a damn subtle disputant. Just then I happen to be expressing no opinion whatsoever. Oh, but you are. I was not. See, sir, you are differing in opinion with me. Would you account, would you quarrel on any account, sir? Me, sir, pick a fight? Never. I don't recall the name, sir. But sounds I shall kill you with the greatest of pleasure. Of course I should like to know why I'm killing you. It is a very pretty argument as it stands. Let's not spoil it with explanation. Name the time and place. King's Mayfield. Half past the hour of seven, your son may accompany you to your resting place. Son, I have no son. Nay, sir, I plead, recognize me. Recognize you? I neither hear nor see you. You are not even present. If you were here, I'd say you were a boar, a booby, and no son of mine. Fortunately, I was not present. Sir Lucius, why did you accost my father? Your father? He didn't even recognize you. Yes, anyone could see he'd never clapped eyes on me before. Regardless, you picked a fight with that elderly stranger. Why, sir? He intends to run away with the affections of Miss Lydia Lang. You fool! That elderly gentleman sought her in marriage for me! For you, but why for you? Because I'm his son, you idiot! Be you the son of Satan himself! That last was a remark that my honor durst not brook. Well, how dare I render a remark that your honor durst not brook? That's right, how dare you render a remark that my honor durst not brook? You challenge me then? Ah, you're an astute fellow. I the believe. choices then are mine. The place? King's Mead Field. The time? Twenty-five minutes past the hour of seven. The weapons? Blunt of bosses. The fools start mad. <clears throat> At what range, sir? Two paces. Ah. Okay. You are in luck, sir. I'm in the mood to accept an apology. Any man, so in want of a father, deserves to own one. You apologize to my father, then, and not fight him. Never! Blunderbusses! Two paces! Oh, Ooh. remember, needs you support an honorable man. <laughs> Blunderbusses! Two paces. You see, I really don't mind being killed now that I shan't have Lydia. And I'm not saying my father! The ill man of old cruel. Indispensable. Unless you happen to be a woman. A woman? 
Why, there's not a wife in England not crushed beneath her husband's boot. Oh, crushed, quite overwhelmed, ma'am. Still, it is the long-established order of things. Then we shall change it. Oh, let it be. Oh, but Lucy, it is not fair. Man has all the best of it. The breast of the cape and the plump leg of the goose. He has ten nights of pleasure and we ten mewling brats. Down with St. George! Oh, the dragon! I don't know, ma'am, or Lady Godiva ever seemed to get for her trouble with saddle sores. Oh, Lucy! I've lost him! <laughs> I'm afraid this is not entirely unexpected either. I, my lady, I don't know why I wear it, but they're going to fight. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh for heaven's sake, Aunt, what is it? Oh, nothing, nothing. Merely suicide, parasite, simulation, and cause catastrophe. Oh, do, ma'am, inform us. I shall hold myself efficient, and every purpose that that forms a woman for breeding, if I delay one single second in giving every article of information in my obsession to a lady so deeply interested in the affair as you are. Oh, quick, Juan, quick, quick, Aunt. What is my interest in the matter? What is the matter? Well, killing's the matter. <coughs> Slaughter's the matter. Murder's the matter. That's what's the matter. But I shall tell you. Shot. Oh, well, I practice that. By my valor, I shall stand thusly. <laughs> oh, no, sir. See, if a ball misses something vital on your left side, it is surely going to hit something vital on your right. Vital part? Yeah, there. Now a ball or two may pass clean through and just do no damage at all. A ball or two? Clean through? Plus, it's ever so much more than graceful. Looky. I just as soon live in an awkward stance as to die gracefully. Therefore, by my valor, I shall stand edgeways. <laughs> by your valor, sir. There. Now, in the event of your being left a quietus, what would you like done? 
a quietus, dead in a dead language. Mm. <laughs> Would you like to be interred in the Abbey? I hear it's very snug in the Abbey nowadays. Or perhaps you'd rather be pickled in brine and sent home. Deterred in the Abbey? Snug? Pickled? Don't talk so. What the devil's the matter with you? Fie, sir, consider your honor. I, my honor. Do Sir Lucius remember to throw in a word now and then about my honor? Here comes someone now. Oh, oh no, I can feel my vowels oozing away as it were through the, through the palms of my hands. Oh. Your honor, sir, your honor. Oh, tis my men at any rate, young absolute. When this ensign Beverly comes, you will fight him, won't you? Oh, pray, Bob, fight to oblige, Sir Lucius. I have news. T'will be no one else coming. Fight me. Uh, no one else coming? But my challenge is with Beverly. I'll fight no one but that coward who dare not show his face. Bob, there is no such person as Beverly. I am he, have always been, have sorely deceived you, and am here as Beverly, ready to account to you for it. Quarrel with my dear friend Jack Absolute? Sir Lucius, you would not have me to be that honorable. Blast me, sir, if your valor hasn't oozed away with a vengeance. Uh, why, I will be your second this evening. And should you become a quietus, why, well, I'll have you interred in the Abbey and pickled and shipped away to Blunderbuss Hall, and with pleasure. You, sir, are no better than a poltroon. You call me poltroon? Yes, sir. Well, oh. well, it's not that I mind the word poltroon. I mean, it's, it could be a joke, but you know, if you'd call me craven now. Then I'm what? I should have thought you extremely ill bred Mr. Akers, you are quite beneath my notice. Then, sir, to our accounting. Knock them both down, Mr. Akers. Knock them both down. I will not have my fight preceded. My honor demands I fight you both. You may, if you'd like, make it a dual duel. But my honor says. Come, let's have no honor before ladies. Captain, Captain Absolute, here's Lydia, quite putrefied for fear. For fear I should be killed or survive. Nay, sir, no delusion to the past. Lydia is yours. I am, sir, and I forswear all thoughts of romantic love and resign myself to a life of luxury. But could no. you? Not even that? No. Oh, very well. I'll be brave. You may smother me in jewels. Not so fast, madam. Tis love for my Delilah has brought me here today. Ah, oh, my Delilah, I would do battle royale for love of her. My Delilah, should she but smile, should she but nod, should she but blush, I would wed this Sir, day. I nod, I smile, I blush, but I'm your co-respondent, your Delilah. Now fall on the crossing, fall, get on the hoop, word what, oh. Who I would wed this very moment, should she have the key to Blunderbuss Hall in her pocket. For I have sworn a blood oath just this minute to wed only the woman who could restore the O'Trigger ancestral home to its former glory. Well then, sir, tis I you must wed. For I have purchased Blunderbuss Hall and the acres there pertaining for the sum of taxes and arrears, two thousand pounds, four shillings and a tuppence, approximately one third of my life savings. I have heard the papers made out to Lucy O'Reilly. But Lucy said it was a small cottage in the country. There are only 44 rooms, ma'am. Oh, Lucy, my love, my darling. I knew a true love that went out to sow in all Miss Lydia's books. Then all is settled. My son Jack to marry Miss Lydia Languish. So Lucius to wed Miss Lucy O'Reilly. Ah, all ends as it should. Yes, father. Holy oh, love. Is all in heaven. All in love is how we do it. Ends in the play of life. Man must find his lot. Love may gild the sea, but women guide the blood. Wait! We haven't settled for my esteemed aunt and former employer, Mrs. Malacroft. Yes, together with my father. <laughs> I mean, my friend. Bob Akers, what an amalgam of specious speech and extraordinary expletives. Could they fail to become enamored of each other in time, each so well grammared like a veritable diphthong of a match? And what offspring could there be of this etymological union, hyperbolic invective, metaphorical epithet? Junior, 
Odds verbiage, what a thesaurus of a nuptial, since it's a marriage made in the heaven of prolixity, the gods of loquacity will be. Oh, sir! Oh, no! Odds damn, I'll fight! Well done, my boy. All in love indeed. Oh.